the 1996 NBA Draft along with 2003 NBA Draft is widely considered to be one of the best player classes of all time. After all, this player class produced Kobe Bryant, a 5-time champion, an NBA legend and a first ballot Hall of Famer. The answer, Allen Iverson, player who changed the NBA with his crossovers and unbelievable highlights. Steve Nash, an amazing point guard who had his heyday with Amari Stoudemire and Phoenix Suns were one of the best offensive teams in the league. Derek Fisher, Drew Zolgowskis, Ray Allen, German O'Neal, Sharif Abdurrahim, Peja Stojakovic, Stefan Marbury, man was this draft kid. But somehow when we're talking about the 1996 draft we forget about the number 2 pick, Marcus Camby. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Purple Pinch here and today I want to talk about a solid player who gets forgotten because of superstars who surrounded him in his draft class. Marcus Camby is a native of Connecticut and was a beast for his Hartford Public High School. In his senior season, Camby averaged 27 points, 11 rebounds, 8 blocks and 8 assists. He won all 27 games with his team that season along with the title and was named Gatorade's Connecticut Player of the Year. His college career was no different. Camby was playing for UMass Minutemen where he was a monster defensively. Camby registered a record 105 total blocks in his first year in college. He won a bunch of awards including Freshman of the Year, John R. Wooden Award and Naismith College Player of the Year in 1995-96 season. Camby set a tournament record of 43 blocks in 11 games and after 3 years in college he decided it's time to enter the NBA Draft. Marcus Camby was selected number 2 overall by Toronto Raptors and in his rookie season he averaged almost 15 points, 6.3 rebounds and 2.1 blocks per game. He also made the NBA All-Rookie first team. Next year his point production slipped but he upped his rebounds and led the league in blocks with 3.7 per game. Somehow though Marcus wasn't what Toronto expected so they traded him to New York Knicks for an aging Charles Oakley. The life wasn't getting easier for Camby who was now stuck behind a Hall of Famer Patrick Ewing in New York Knicks center rotation. Camby backed up Ewing for his first two seasons with the Knicks. His minutes were down significantly but he still averaged a good amount of points, rebounds and blocks. In a lockout shortened 99 season, Knicks finished with a 27-23 record which was good enough for the 8th seed in the Eastern Conference. Camby and Latrell Sproul played really good and managed to beat Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawks in the first two rounds of the playoffs. In the Eastern Conference Finals they were facing their rivals at the time, Indiana Pacers. And even without Patrick Ewing who injured his Achilles and had to miss the rest of the playoffs, New York Knicks managed to beat Pacers in 6, becoming the first ever 8th seed to reach NBA Finals. Cinderella's story ended in the finals though where Spurs beat Knicks in 5 games starting their dynasty. After Ewing returned from an injury, Camby was relegated back to a backup center role where he was solidly averaging 10 points, 8 rebounds and 2 blocks in only 26 minutes of play. After Ewing was traded to Orlando, it was Camby's time to take over as the Knicks starting center. He responded very good, averaging double-double in his last two seasons with the Knicks. But the lack of playoff success with the team and his unavailability made him just a good asset and in 2002 he was traded to Denver Nuggets in exchange for Antonio Magdias. And again, his minutes were down. He played only in 29 games starting 9 of them. Denver had a good pack of centers already in Chris Anderson, Nene and Mark Blunt with all of them splitting starting jobs from time to time. Denver didn't make the playoffs but got their next star in the draft. In 2003, Denver drafted a future superstar in Carmelo Anthony, and with a star by his side, Camby solidified himself as a starting center for the Nuggets. For the next five seasons with Denver Nuggets, he started every game he played and averaged impressive 12 points, 12 rebounds, and more than 3 blocks in each of his five regular seasons with Denver. However, the lack of postseason success was also following him in Denver. Nuggets made the playoffs each season with Camby as a starting center, but every time they were bounced out in the first round. The stats in playoffs showed that he was performing very well as a defensive center. He averaged more than 11 boards per game in each playoff series and added around 3 blocks per game as well. 
In 2007 playoffs, he averaged almost 15 rebounds per game, but his field goal percentage was miserable. In the last playoff series with Denver Nuggets, he shot only 23.8% for the floor. Denver didn't believe that Camby could become better at this point in his career and traded him to Los Angeles Clippers, essentially for a swap of second round picks, and Camby wasn't happy. He thought that he was being made the scapegoat of Denver's playoff losses. He was continuing his solid play with the Clippers but not only as a center, he was also starting at power forward now. As usual, he got his impressive regular season numbers when it came to rebounds and blocks, but he couldn't make the playoffs with Clippers so he got traded to Portland Trailblazers, who needed a solid center after battling with injuries to their starting centers Greg Oden and Joel Prisbilla. Portland did make the playoffs but unfortunately for Camby, they got bounced out in the first round again. After showing himself as a solid piece for Portland in the games he did play, he signed a two-year extension to stay with the Blazers in 2010. His minutes started dropping again and his production took a dip as well. He was still a presence defensively and grabbing rebounds, but he gave almost nothing offensively so was traded again, this time to Houston Rockets. His stint with the Rockets was very short, ending in just 13 regular season games for the team. After the 2012 season, Camby was a part of a signing trade and came back to his early career home, the New York Knicks. Never being known as a man who plays every game though, he missed most of the 2012-2013 season with a foot injury and appeared in only 24 games showing that his career is basically over. He still had a chance to experience a bit of playoffs in 2013, but that was a very small peak to say the least. He recorded just 2 points, 2 rebounds and 3 minutes in the 3 playoff games with the Knicks. Those were the last games he played in NBA. He was still traded to Toronto and later bought out, and in summer of 2013 there was a chance he might get another stint with the Houston Rockets, but right before the season he was waived and his NBA career effectively ended. So that's the story of Marcus Camby. While he never was an all-star as he was projected, he was a solid player who I think gets forgotten because of other people around him who accomplished more. He won the 2007 NBA Defensive Player of the Year, made NBA All-Defensive teams and led the league in blocks four times. He wasn't a superstar, but he was a defensive monster who shouldn't be forgotten either. What do you think guys? Would you have wanted Marcus Camby in your team? Did he once at least a mention for a Hall of Fame someday? Leave a comment below, like this video and subscribe for some future NBA content. I'm Purple Prince and I'm out. I got bribes in Atlanta, just to throw me in the family. Credit cards in the scammers, hitting the licks in the van. Legacies, family, Wayne C, look like a panda. Going out like a Montana. Honey killers on it.